Welcome to this tutorial video. Today we'll be looking at uniform acceleration examples in particular, these one, two, three, four, five different equations that can be used in any situation involving uniform acceleration. So example number one. A rally car accelerates from 10 meters per second to 58 meters per second in eight seconds as it moves along a straight road. Given that the acceleration is constant, there's the key to this problem, what is the acceleration of the car? So first of all we need to look at what variables we have. Variables meaning the numbers we can extract from the question. So you can see that we have initial velocity of 10 meters per second, that's the start of our story, and we use the symbol of u for initial velocity. So we have u equals 10 meters per second. V, the final velocity, the end of our story, is 58 meters per second. So we write down v equals 58 meters per second. And this is the advised way to set out our work. The time says this acceleration occurs, this speeding up occurs over eight seconds. And we want to know what is the actual rate of acceleration, a equals question mark. When we look at the series of equations we had before, there's only one that has a u, v, t, and a in it. So we need to select that particular equation, and it is v equals u plus at. Now we just need to substitute our values in. So where we have the letter v, we substitute in the value for v, 58, for this example. We have the letter u, we substitute in the value 10 for this example. a was 8, and, sorry, t was 8, and a is the unknown. So we've now got a mathematical expression, 58 equals 10 plus 8a. We're trying to work out what a is. So let's take 10 from both sides. That will leave us with 48 equals 8a. And simply now to get a by itself, it's currently multiplied by 8, we'll need to divide both sides by 8. So a is 48 divided by 8. And in this system we now know acceleration of this car is 6 meters per second per second. Commonly referred to as 6 meters per second squared. That's example number one. Example number two, a bus traveling along a straight road accelerates at 2 meters per second per second for four seconds, covering a distance of 44 meters. After the four seconds, what velocity is the bus traveling at? So again, think of this as a a start and a finish and somewhere in the middle we've got this constant rate of acceleration. So the variables first of all. Well the first one we have is an acceleration of 2 meters per second per second. So that's A. T is for 4 seconds, that's the time. X is 44 meters, that's our distance or displacement. And V is the final velocity. We want to know what is the velocity at the end of this 4 second period. We now need to select an equation. And again only one has an AT, X and V and it is X equals VT take a half at squared, a bit of a complex looking equation. We now sub our values in again, so x was 44, so we sub that in for x. v is the unknown, we leave that in. t was 4 seconds. A half times a, these equations are half at squared. There's really an invisible multiplication between the half, the a, and the a and the t. So a half at squared is the same as a half times a times t squared. So it's a half of 2 for the acceleration times 4 squared. That square is just on the t the time for 4. Let's expand that. So that gives us 44 equals 4v take 16. Because a half times 2 is just 1, times 4 squared is 16 rather, not 14. So 44 equals v, sorry, 44 equals 4v take 16. Next we want to get our v value, so let's add 16 on both sides to get rid of it on the right hand side. That leaves you with 60 equals 4v, and of course to get v by itself we need to divide both sides by 4. So v ends up being 15 meters per second. So a car that's accelerating at 2 meters per second per second for 4 seconds, covering a distance of 44 meters, after 4 seconds it will have a velocity of 15 meters per second. Example 3, a rowboat crosses the finish line at 12 meters per second. It's the end of the story. Oh, actually it might continue as a start and carries on in a straight line. If it immediately decelerates at 4 meters per second per second until it comes to rest, how far past the finish line will the rowing boat come to a stop? So this 12 meters per second is in fact the start of our story. So first of all our initial is 12 meters per second. Our acceleration this time decelerates, so it's a negative acceleration, so acceleration is negative 4 meters per second per second. Our final velocity is zero because it comes to rest, and we want to know how far past the finish line will it end up, x equals question mark. The equation that has that is v squared equals u squared plus 2x. We sub in our variables, so and we simplify that. We have 0 equals 144 plus in brackets negative 8 times x, or written as such. Let's get the 8x 
by itself, so I will take 144 from both the left and the right, and that will leave me with negative 144 is equal to negative 8x. Divide both sides by negative 8, and we end up with a distance of 18 metres per second. I hope you're starting to get the, the, the system here, the steps of getting the variables number 1, selecting the correct equation number 2, and then substitute and solve step number 3. That's normally the trickier end of for some students. Example number four. During the middle of an 800 metre race, an athlete running at 6 metres per 6.8 metres per second rather, constantly accelerates along part of the straight to 8 metres per second in order to get in the better position for the final lap. Given this took two seconds, what distance did the athlete cover in this time? So our variables. Again, we've got an initial velocity of 6.8 metres per second. That's u. A final velocity of 8 metres per second, that's the end of the story, that's V. The time it took for that change is 2 seconds, and I want to know what is the distance travelled X. Select our equation, X equals a half in brackets U plus V, close brackets T. Sub in our variables and simplify, and that comes out simple. X equals 14.8 metres, that's the answer to our question. Next example, the train leaves the station from rest and travels along a straight track. If after 20 seconds the train is 500 metres from the station, what is the acceleration of the train? Let's follow our, our process. State the variables. Starts from rest, that's got an initial u of 0 metres per second. The time it takes is 20 seconds. The distance travelled is 500 metres, and we want to know what the acceleration is. Let's check an equation that has the ut, x and a, and it is x equals ut plus a half at squared. Sub in our variables, simplify that. So I've got 500 equals 200a. To get a by itself, it's multiplied by 200. So let's do the reverse mathematical process. Let's divide both sides by 200. So the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second per second. And I think this is our final answer, example. A lift at the ground floor rises vertically from rest with a constant acceleration of 0.6 meters per second squared. If it passes the first floor at 1.8 meters per second, how high is the first floor? So our variables, we start off from rest, that's an initial u of 0 metres per second. Our acceleration accelerates, it's positive, so that's 0 0.6 metres per second per second. And our final velocity at the end of our story is 1.8 metres per second, it's sped up. And I want to know what, how high the first floor is, what was the distance it travelled when accelerating from 0 to 1.8 metres per second at a rate of 0 0.6 metres per second per second. Let's select the equation, and it is v squared equals u squared plus 2ax. Let's sub in our values, and of course x is our unknown, so that remains x, and simplify. So we have 3.24 equals 1.2x, or 1.2 times x. Let's divide both sides by 1.2, and we have a value of x, the height from the zero, ground floor, up to, one, up to sorry, the first floor is 2.7 metres. Look, I hope these examples have, have helped give you some understanding of how we extract information from a descriptive written question to collect our variables. And sometimes those are hidden, like starting from an initial velocity of zero or starting from rest. Um, and then selecting the correct equation. There's only one equation that has the four variables we're interested in, including the unknown. And then the mathematical steps of substitution and solve. I hope it's helping. It's a great skill to learn in year 10, used a lot in year 11 and year 12. Thanks for watching. Work hard.